Hey everybody, if uh, you're watching this video, it's hopefully because you're interested in modifying your Volkswagen Mark IV ALH engine to become a standalone system uh, for use in an engine swap or something similar. This video gives uh, starts out giving an overview of the ALH harness, which is already deleted, um, showing the connections for the large side ECU harness. Uh, the large side ECU harness connects to various sensors, actuators like the N75 valve, um, and is basically used to run and control the engine. The small side ECU harness is not shown in this video uh, because it can remain unchanged, but that covers the uh, fuel injection pump and a couple of the other um, sensors that exist on the engine itself. Um, I might modify that, uh, that small side harness in the future, and if I do, I'll upload a video detailing that uh, procedure. Uh, you can come back to this title slide or um, I'm just going to try to put in the description links to the specific part of the harness that you want details on. Uh, if I need to clarify any specific parts of the video, let me know and I'll try to help. All right, let's get started. All right, here's the big um, uh, sensor side wiring harness. This is the 127 pin connector for the Bosch EDC 15. Uh, let's start over here at the left real quick. Um, this is the black connector. This wire harness leads directly into the larger connect, larger ECU. Um, the black, uh, this just plugs straight in. What I'm doing here is I'm leaving all of these connections, all of these uh, Technicolor plugs, basically. Um, I'm leaving these solid. I don't want to delete any of them. Uh, it's not going to save that much space. And it's not that hard to loom them up and uh, keep them. Nothing from this black connector is being used currently, but there is some sensors and I think the brake pedal is on there. So I'm just gonna keep it in, in case I ever wanna run cruise control or something like that. All right, let's go to this. On the orange one, we talked about the other side of this already. Um, the only thing used on this is the K-line, but once again, we're keeping this whole uh, orange harness intact. Blue is the foot pedal. Um, the uh, the factory wiring harness comes nicely tangled up on the blue pedal. I think the blue pedal and the black pedal are nicely intertangled. So I just cut one of these wires and re-spliced it back together just so it would, it would be able to route wherever I wanted it to. And the white wire, um, you'll notice that there's two orange and white wires. Uh, one of this twisted orange and, uh, sorry, orange and black pairs, one of this twisted orange pairs leads to the ECU. And the other one leads somewhere else. Um, don't cut the one that goes to the ECU. But keep that wiring harness all intact. Up here at the top, this, uh, these four wires lead directly to the manifold absolute pressure sensor. And I think the uh, temperature sensor is also in there. And these wire colors are, for reference, there is a yellow black sensor wire. Yeah, that's the 12 volt power. There is a purple, red, and a, looks like green, gray, and also a blue, blue, brown, maybe. It's hard to see. But these are the, these four wires right here. These lead from the ECU directly to the manifold air pressure sensor. That's, I'm gonna be running speed density control. Um, and so I've actually deleted out the MAF sensor. Um, the MAF sensor is right here. I'm gonna loom this off right here. Um, the MAF sensor gets a yellow black power sensor wire, this green and black twisted pair, and then uh, this this is the red and purple, I think that's a ground wire. So that is for the mass airflow sensor, the MAF. But that's getting deleted out on my loom. That's a direct connection, it doesn't go to any connector. Also, there's another couple deletions. Um, these, are, these are the bundle of wires that I have deleted out currently. Um, some of these were automatic transmission wires. There's a yellow, red, a couple grounds, um, looks like a purple wire, and a solid maybe gray wire. 
Um, I think some of these might be sensors. Um, uh, sorry, some of these might be cluster. Uh, uh, they drive the cluster. I'm gonna leave these wires a little bit longer in case I need to use them, but it's easy enough to loom out. Don't wanna cut it too short. Uh, it can be a pain to splice everything in. All right, here's our N75. Coming from the N75, you have a yellow, black, that's a 12 volt power wire. And this is the sensor. This wire heads directly back to the ECU. I've got to clean up. This is the original yellow black splice from the factory loom. You can see that's all interconnected back to the brown connector, the brown power connector. This yellow black splice also goes to the glow plug relay. Now the glow plug relay is one of those things where um, you can delete that out with a tune if you want. Um, I'm choosing to leave it in because the glow plugs are, um, they're coolant temperature sensor dependent and um, I don't want to have to futz with uh, running that um, running that as a manual system if I don't have to. Coming off of the ECU, there's also this brown-red double wire into a loom. That goes into the glow plug relay over here. This gets connected to chassis ground. You can connect it closer if you want or farther away. But uh, testing that, you'll get continuity between this, this wire and the case of the ECU. The glow plug relay also has this nice blue and green wire, blue and I think it's green black wires that both head directly into the ECU. Okay. We talked about the yellow black wire. This is all untouched. Um, this bolts into that relay fuse block. I forget which uh, which fuse power this glow plug. This is where the glow plug source is power from. I think it's maybe a 30 or 50 amp fuse. Um, and this plugs into your engine side wiring harness for the glow plugs. That's what sends the power to the glow plugs. You'll also notice, uh, this is the last thing, this is the red and purple. This is 12 volt power to the ECU. This is the main power for the ECU. This gets, uh, this is a splice external from the ECU and runs directly into the brown connector, which gets 12 volt power on the other side. You'll also notice on this brown connector, there is a purple wire, a thin purple wire. That needs 12 volt power but that's gonna be spliced in on the other side of the brown connector and this yellow black wire, which gets power spliced in from the other end of the yellow black connector as well. You're gonna to wanna to run fuses to those probably. I don't know what the factory fuse is. There's this red wire, which is covered in a black tape. That's cut off, that leads to the manual, tra uh, the automatic transmission, I believe. And then there's this other one, this, um, this teal yellow wire that's also unconnected. All right, so here is the female end of the brown plug. And currently I have this semi-connected to the, uh, this is the T14 connector, which goes to the small side, uh, the engine side of the wiring harness. I don't have that out. That's still connected to my engine currently. Um, from that, from the T14, let's see, what am I powering? I'm powering this purple wire right here. This brown wire is connected to ground. It's all brown, always ground. Um, I'm also connecting this yellow and black wire to 12 volt power. And this red and, I think it's a red and purple wire. That's going to ground, that's going to power, 12 volt power. So we've got one large ground wire, power, power,
and uh, purple power. So these three are powered from T14. Brown is grounded. Let's see. I believe I'm not using these other wires currently. I think this small purple one may have to get 12 volt positive power, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how that goes when I'm actually running things together. From the uh, brown connector, the female side, we're putting positive 12 volt power to the thick red and purple wire. That gets positive 12 volt power. That's gonna be your main ECU power. Let's see what else. All right, here is Okay, here is the T14 connector. This is in the engine bay. This is deloomed. Um, coming off of this, uh, we're running a couple of these wires. There's four wires that we're running right now. Uh, this solid, thicker brown one, um, that's ground. That's gonna go to chassis ground. We've got a yellow black wire. That's gonna get 12 volt power. And a uh, red, purple wire, or red, uh, red lilac wire, that's going to get 12 volt power, and a um, darker purple wire, that's also going to get 12 volt power. And same thing over on this brown connector over here, That's that has a yellow black 12 volt power, this is a purple wire, notice these are the same color, that's getting 12 volt power, and this thicker red black, same, same wire color, that's also getting 12 volt power. Uh, this is the main power for the ECU. I think this is the, these are the main power for your sensors on the engine. Um, there's also two wires coming off this brown connector here. Uh, there's this uh, teal yellow wire, or maybe lilac yellow wire. Um, that is unconnected on my standalone harness. Some of you may have that different. This is the same color wire as goes to the Relay 109, as goes to the... Um, the blue connector uh, power wire that gets 12 volts. Now you may want to connect those. I might have to, I'll figure that out later. But I'm right now leaving this on power to run the standalone harness. And there's also this, um, this other wire, which is a smaller gauge uh, red and black wire, not to be confused with the red and purple wire. This red and black wire um, is cut as well on the other side of my orange, or sorry, my, my brown connector. Um, that led into the automatic transmission. That was the power for the automatic transmission module. Um, not using that. I'm saving these wires long in case I want to run accessories or something off them later, maybe a fuse block. We will figure that out. And there's a couple more on this T14 over here. Um, there's this brown and white wire. There's a, a lighter purple wire. There's two greens, and there's a black and purple wire. I'm not touching those currently. Um, you'll see there's also a couple that are cut short. Those are completely um, on the other end of this T14 connector, on the engine side. Um, those are not connected at all. All right. So I'm going to make probably a block and fuse those wires, fuse these two little uh, connectors together. Okay, here is the foot pedal. This is the drive-by wire ALH, so you need a foot pedal. That's one of the required systems. And that connects, this entire harness is exclusively, if you do a good job, you can pull it out without cutting anything, except um, you'll see this connector just plugs right into the foot pedal. And that will connect to your blue connector on the main big harness. There is one thing on this, uh, on the blue, on the blue connector. This is a, um, this is a power sense wire, I think for the Relay 109. If you connect this to switched uh, 12 volt positive, this is the wake up signal. This is the wake up signal for the ECU. So I think what you do is um, you get power to the whole system to wake up the ECU. That's when you turn the key on. This gets, this gets 12 volt power. 
and that wire is a I think it's called the lilac and yellow wire from the, from the sheets I'm gonna completely remove the relay 109 and find another way to do it seems unnecessary all right All right, here's the OBD2 section of the ALH standalone wiring harness. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, coming off of the OBD2 port right here, this line, which goes, uh, this white and this red and white wire, not to be confused with the white and red wire, uh, which is this red and white wire in the corner, that goes to 12 volt positive. Um, if you put power to this, your OBD scanner will turn on, uh, no matter what. This is a, um, let's see what color is this. It looks like a black and blue wire coming off. That's a manufacturer wire that's unused currently. These two brown wires both connect to chassis ground. And there is another white and red wire in a different location. That connects to the white connector. That white and red wire is a manufacturing wire. I'm going to leave that in there. I don't see a reason to cut it out currently. Um, let's see. Coming off of the white connector, there are a black wire and a solid white wire. And those are the CAN bus high and low, which are used for reading the OBD2 scanner. Well, uh, reading with an OBD2 scanner. Those are connected to the twisted orange and black and orange and brown wire pair. Um, the black is twisted to, uh, you're going to splice it in with the orange and black. And the white, you're going to splice it in with the orange and brown. I forget which one's high and which one's low. I think the white is low and the black is high. All right. Uh, the rest of these wires in the orange bus are unused. Um, I think there's a some sort of sensor coming off of there uh, that's going to be used for, I think it's maybe the tachometer sensor, I'm not sure yet. Um, there's also a, uh, it looks like a brown, slightly red wire um, that's unused. And there's also a white and brown wire, or brown and white wire that's unused. So yeah, the two wires from this plug are the CAN bus high and low. And the one wire from this plug is the K line that's gonna be connected. I wanna keep the K line so you can use VCDS. Um, all right, that's pretty simple, that's it.